from your hearts. Thus reads the Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Of all the evil we see throughout the world, in our nation, and even the human element of the church, we rightly want to battle against and even eradicate it. At times, though, we may feel quite helpless in doing anything, considering how much power our enemies possess. In today's gospel parable, our Lord commands us to forgive from our hearts, and this includes all those who are doing evil in the world, whether it is within the church, within our nation, and, and whatever it might be, we are called to forgive those persons from our heart. But this does not mean that we will do not fail to resist the evil, but rather we pray for those who are doing the evil that they may be converted and gain salvation. Indeed, in today's epistle, St. Paul identifies our principal enemy. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the world, of this darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. So the spiritual warfare is ultimately against the devil and his assisting demons. Thus, in order to overcome them and their accomplices here on earth, whom St. Gregory the Great calls the mystical body of Satan, we need to engage in daily spiritual warfare. Some of you may have come back in July uh, during the series that we had over the summer. I gave one of the talks on spiritual warfare, which you can still watch uh, on our parish YouTube page. In today's epistle, St. Paul writes on the essential spiritual armory which we need to carry with us at all times to overcome the works of the devil. St. Paul writes that in all things taking the shield of faith, wherewith we be able to extinguish all the fiery darts of the most wicked one. In his first epistle, St. Peter exhorts us to resist the devil, strong in faith. So both the apostles Peter and Paul teach us that among the greatest spiritual arms to bear against the devil, as in any temptations even in the world, is the theological virtue of faith, as well as the truths of our faith. Certainly we bear the armor of faith more fully by both prayer, including acts of faith, and studying the truths of our Catholic faith. Today's epistle, St. Paul also exhorts us to arm ourselves with the helmet of salvation. In his first epistle to the Thessalonians, St. Paul refers to it as a helmet of the helmet, the hope of salvation. So the theological virtue of hope protects our mind from the devil's lies and temptations to either despair or presume of God's mercy. We need to cultivate hope and pray acts of hope so that we'd be willing to daily battle with humble trust that we can take part in Christ's victory over Satan. St. Paul also bids us to wear the breastplate of justice or charity, which protects the heart from all the allure of sin, and so to persevere and grow in the life of charity or grace. And if we, of course, are separated from Christ to mortal sin, it is like casting off all of our armory and armaments. So in that case, we should, as soon as possible, receive the sacrament of penance. We ought also to pray daily an act of charity or love to grow in this the greatest of theological virtues. In the uh, Manual for Spiritual Warfare by Paul Thigpen, he rightly highlights the power of the sacraments to aid us in the spiritual warfare. At baptism, we become children of God and members of the mystical body of Christ, the church, and so are, the, are called to engage in spiritual warfare against the kingdom of Satan. If we are baptized, as most of us are, before the age of reason, it's our parents or godparents who promise to first battle on our behalf. 
One way to tap into the grace of our baptism is to frequently bless ourselves with holy water, which naturally recalls to mind our baptism, and also, either at the same time or some other times, renewing our baptismal promises, such as is recommended in the, by St. Louis Marie de Montfort in the prayer of total, total consecration that, that, that he offers. In the very middle part of the prayer is when we renew and ratify the vows of our baptism. In the Sacrament of Confirmation, St. Cyril of Jerusalem teaches that we have put on the full suit of armor of the Holy Ghost, and this makes the demons tremble. And the Catechism of the Council of Trent teaches that we are given the strength of a new power and thus begin to become a perfect soldier of Christ to fight manfully and to resist our most wicked foes. An excellent way then to grow into, in the grace of the sacrament of confirmation is to pray daily to our confirmation saint so that we will courageously, like them, resist evil and also be faithful soldiers of Christ. In addition, the sacrament of penance is a great aid in the spiritual warfare. As Thigpen points out, we can view this powerful sacrament as a kind of field hospital for soldiers who have been wounded by sin in spiritual battle. In addition to frequent reception of confession, we can also daily tap into the sacramental grace of the sacrament of penance by renewing our purpose of amendment, especially from our previous most recent confession, and by praying an act of contrition. Obviously, frequent and fervent reception of Holy Communion is so very powerful nourishment for spiritual warfare. As St. John Chrysostom teaches, after receiving Holy Communion, it makes us like lions breathing fire, having become terrible to the devil. And even when we are not able to receive the sacrament or throughout the day, we can always make spiritual communions to experience some of this tremendous power. For married couples who have received the sacrament of holy matrimony, daily prayer for and with each other is a wonderful means to bestow sacramental grace on each other, to courageously live out your vows, and also to be a source of strength and grace to others, especially against the all too frequent demonic attacks against traditional marriage and the family. As aids to our spiritual warfare, I recommend, as I already said, the Manual of Spiritual Warfare, warfare by Paul Thigpen, which includes many beautiful prayers as well as wonderful quotations from the saints, and also the book, The Deliverance Prayers for the Use of the Laity by Father Chad Ripperger. As soldiers of Christ through baptism and confirmation, May we heed the call of St. Paul today, put you on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the seats of the devil and be able to resist in the evil day. May our blessed mother, St. Joseph, and all the angels and saints help us to resist the evil in our midst, whether it be within the church or in the, our nation, especially through spiritual warfare by growing in the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity and experiencing regularly the powerful graces from the sacraments and sacramentals so that we more and more are able to be strengthened in the Lord and in the might of his power. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.